Hello students, this is Evolutionary Reasoning and today I want to tell you why you shouldn't really be worried too much about the fact that I keep on talking about genes, even though that might seem that it is somehow abhorrent. Um, the bottom line is that a tiny amount of heritability can go a long ways to explaining biological evolution. Okay, so before we get started, I want to make a little distinction between genetic adaptation, that's biological evolution that I've been talking about, and extrasomatic adaptation, that's cultural evolution. And either genetic adaptation or extrasomatic adaptation, or both, can be responsible for why something is the way it is, why humans are the way we are. And uh, we will get into the extrasomatic adaptation as the course goes on. But today, I still am talking about uh, biological adaptation. If something is adaptive in a biological sense, like our ability to learn language, not our ability to learn, say, English versus French, but just our ability to learn language at all, if we're saying that that's adaptive, and I think it is, then it must have been heritable when it was evolving, when it was originating. And so people worry that this opens the door to such things as uh, racism and eugenics and all sorts of things that uh, we might uh, really want to distance ourselves from. And sure, that is true. It does open the door, but I don't think it, it commits us to it. And so I want to give you some reasons why even though I think that something like language is adaptive, and there's lots of other things about what you might call human nature that have a little trace of biological adaptation underneath them, nevertheless, I want to give you a whole bunch of reasons why I don't think that that commits us to the genetic determinism that would force us to be these like robots of our genes that are unable to overcome our genetics. So the first thing is that the genetics we're talking about might have accounted for only a tiny bit of variance in the trait at the time of origination. So as you were having genetic variation for the ability to speak language, that could have been a very low heritability. That could have been, you know, like a 10% heritability which certainly would not have meant that the proto-humans of the time were unable to kind of overcome their genetic differences. There would still be 90% of the variation among those proto-humans that would be due to the environment and other such things. So even though I think there's some genetic basis, you know, like there's a genetic difference between chimpanzees and humans in their ability to speak language, that doesn't mean that as it accumulated through time, there was any moment in time when we would have viewed it as just, you know, this everything's determined by your genes type of scenario. Okay, the second reason is that even though uh, we're committed to invoking a genetic difference between, say, chimps and humans, we are not committed to believing that there is any appreciable variation among modern humans. Like, I could easily believe that all healthy modern humans have the ability to speak language equally and far in excess of the differences we're talking about. And I could still believe that and also believe that back in the day there was genetic variation among those proto-humans that involved not being able to speak as well as I'm able to speak and that it was genetically based. So we don't have to think that the genetics of the past is the genetics of the current time. Although I kind of do. You know, I kind of do think that there's probably a little teeny bit of heritability among current people I don't see any reason not to think that, but it's not what I'm invoking when I'm saying that the ability to learn language is adaptive. Okay, the third thing that kind of comes into play here is that we might measure variation among modern humans, 
And that variation among modern humans might be due to genetics and due to rare deleterious mutations of large effect. And what I mean by that is that after you had the essentially universal spread of this adaptive ability to learn language, that after that happened, then there were, in one human or another, there were mutations that arose that knock out the ability to learn language. And those uh, genes that don't work, they're not the same genes that are responsible for the spread of the ability to speak language in the first place. It's the same thing as if you have a bad spark plug and that can make your car not run well, right? And that's a spark plug that has an effect that's large. But just because you know that it's the spark plug that makes your car not run well, that doesn't mean that the origin of properly running cars involved merely the invention of good spark plugs. No, it involved the invention of all sorts of different parts of the car, including probably spark plugs that were progressively a little bit better than previous spark plugs that were, were a little bit better than other proto spark plugs before that, right? So you could have the evolution of language or the evolution of any other uh, trait that we notice in humans or any other species that arose through the substitution of many alleles of small effect. That could be the case. And it could still be the case that sometimes you have mutations that knock out that whole adaptive complex. And so, yes, we do find people very rarely who have very unusual mutations that knock out one or another aspect of their ability to learn language. But that variation is probably not the same variation that was responsible for the origination of language um, incrementally uh, back in the day. So I have this number four, and it's kind of like some of the ones that I've already been talking about. It's really that numbers like heritability and phrases like percentage of variance explained by genes, that only makes sense in the context of what statisticians call analysis of variance. Like it only makes sense in the context of you measured how much variation there was in people in their ability to speak language. You measured it uh, in foster children. You measured it in their foster parents and their biological parents. And then you were able to figure out slopes of those lines and stuff like that. And that's useful. It's very interesting. It's very, very interesting to do twin studies, for instance. But that's not the same as what causes the organism to be the way it is. The organism was brought into being. An individual is brought into being by a long dialogue between genes and the environment that stretches back to before that individual was conceived. Like we're doing some kind of ambiguous language when we talk about the percentage of variance explained by genes, and we talk about genes determining what the organism's going to be. Like, of course, genes determine what the organism's going to be. You wouldn't be what you are if you didn't have genes, right? You also wouldn't be what you are if you didn't have your environment. It's 100% of your genes and your environment that have been talking to each other throughout your whole development and the development of the egg and sperm that you came from and your parents. All of that stuff has gone into who you are and you can't divide it up into genes versus the environment. That dividing it up only makes sense in the context of statistics. And so people are like changing the meaning of the words when they use it outside of the context of statistics. Even in the context of analysis of variance, adaptations could have arisen with very small heritability values, so small that we would hardly have noticed them. And we certainly wouldn't have been bound by our genes under this view. 
Now, I have some other reasons to kind of talk about this. And one is that behavioral adaptations in particular, as opposed to anatomical adaptations, but particularly behavioral adaptations, also anatomical ones, but less so. Behavioral adaptations are generally conditional ones. They are ones that are of the form, um, if you're cornered, then fight, else change the subject. <laughs> and, um, you know, like the whole idea of behavior is that there's this great plasticity in how it responds to different situations. So I think that those people who are really um, fearful of genetic determinism, they kind of miss this point that any organism, not just humans, like their adaptations are conditional, especially their behavioral adaptations. And so if you grow up in the ghetto, you're going to behave in a certain way, whereas if you grow up in the burbs, you're going to behave in a different way. And uh, that's certainly not denied by evolutionists. So you could say our animal nature does not doom us to violence, selfishness, and cheating. I would say that that's inside of us. You know, like we do have the capacity for violence, selfishness, and cheating. We should recognize it as part of our animal heritage. And if we set up the conditions right, we can avoid the worst consequences of that. So even if your genes are not perfect, and almost no one's genes are perfect, like almost everybody is born with a new mutation, and if you weren't, then you probably your parents were, and you have a new bad mutation that you got from them. So even if your genes are not perfect, many features of human potential can be realized with a little bit of tender loving care that is the contribution of the environment in that analysis of variance. Moreover, for mental stuff, it's probably quite a bit um, better than for things like height or the dimensions of an organism, anatomical things. For mental stuff, um, there would be even more kind of conditionality and flexibility that would be built into our adaptive system. That's why I think even though we are adapted to learn language, we learn different languages depending on what we grew up with and who we heard speaking when we were when we were young. So another way to think about it is that although a short person is not likely to be a world-class basketball player, um, a short person with practice and zeal can become the best basketball player in her school. And that's all that I have to say about that. <laughs>